what you're looking at right here is the wiring diagram for a camper van that's going to use the 057 mini BMS as well as a supplemental system that I designed to control the Tesla battery and a Victron inverter and what I've done here is automated the system so that it works no matter what so I'm gonna go ahead and explain the changes that I've made to this after running the 057 mini BMS through its paces one of the things I noticed is that I simulated you taking the taking the system and then just leaving it outside for like a month say outside of the parking lot of a hospital what would happen with the system is that the Tesla battery is going to power the essential loads like a temperature controlled fan and maybe an LED light and eventually it's just gonna run itself down to uh, um, the point where one of the cells is low at that point the mini BMS here is going to trip this contactor off it's gonna cut power to it and it's going and everything's gonna shut down that's when the backup battery is going to kick in and start powering the essential loads. That's going to be the Serbo GX, which is what allows you to monitor all of this and actually figure out why the, why the Tesla battery shut down. It's also going to control, uh, for example, if it overheated, it'll have fans blowing on it. Um, it could also have a heating element if it got too cold. We're not choosing to go with that, but that's definitely an option. Um, it's also It would also power an emergency light, so if you want to have a little strip of LEDs so you can see where you are in the van, it would power that as well. And if any of this stuff fails, it's actually going to set off a siren because this is very much essential equipment right there. It runs alarms that monitor the battery and various sensors. It checks to make sure there's no water in the system. It does a lot of different things. We want to make sure that all this equipment is fully functional because if there is no power to this contactor, then the Tesla battery is going to be disconnected. And one of the things that I did is I had a setup like this and I went on vacation for five weeks and the small amount of power that the relay was pulling from the battery actually drew it down to zero. Just a few milliamps over the course of 24 hours a day for weeks. That and a little LED just drew it down and I wasted a thousand dollar battery and I know this Tesla battery is over a thousand dollars so we can't let this happen so that's why this contactor and the relay that it controls are actually powered by this 8s lithium battery which has its own robust battery management system integrated into it and additionally there's a little 9 volt battery that actually sets an alarm if any of this fails so we have a battery mo <laughs> being monitored by a battery being monitored by a battery and the reason for that is not to make it overly complicated, but to make it automated. So that if something goes wrong, very much like a car, you're going to be alerted to it. You're not just going to come back and nothing's going to turn on. And that's one of the scenarios that I'm going to explain here. So let's say that you just leave it outside for a month. This Tesla battery is going to go ahead and shut itself off eventually because even though when one cell drops down, it'll shut the contactor off and then it'll auto balance the cells and the contactor will turn back on again and it'll power this essential loads for um, a, a little bit and then it'll turn itself back off again as one cell drops low auto balance turn itself back on and it'll loop like that essentially forever until all the cells are perfectly balanced and below the turn on threshold again and which at that point this battery is going to be off forever and this contactor is never going to turn back on so if I attempt to charge it using the inverter the inverter doesn't see the battery and even if I would attempt to send power to it the contactor is off and the only way and that's and there's no other connection to the battery it's just through the contactor and through this breaker so we need a bypass for this system in order to make that work but a bypass is dangerous because it bypasses the security of the BMS. So the question was how do I integrate this together? I could add another contactor and set it up with a diode for directionality or I could change the way that all of this works with separate input and output but I decided to go for an entirely automated system. So the way that this works is in the event that this is dead and let's also say that this 
backup system that can, that um, controls the temperature-based relays that will set alarms uh, for this battery. It'll blow hot air on it if it gets too hot, heaters too cold, lights to see what you're doing, etc. This will also shut itself down if you were to leave it outside for, say, five weeks or so. Definitely be off by then. So the way you recover the system is you just take your standard laptop charger. It can pretty much be any uh, laptop charger. I'll make a custom barrel plug for you and you just plug it in. Right there, I actually already sent him this device. And then to this switch right here, and this is going to automatically charge that 8S device and you just give it some time. And once you and uh, once you let that guy charge up for, give it a give it a couple hours, you're going to go ahead and flip two switches. You're going to flip the charge Tesla switch and you're going to flip this bypass switch here. And that's going to automatically send power from here into the Tesla battery plus the power from your uh, laptop charger. So it's going to double it up. And then that is going to go ahead and turn the Tesla battery back on again. And with the Tesla battery back on, your inverter is going to automatically kick itself on. And with the inverter turned on, it's going to take power from the AC outlet and start charging this Tesla battery in this loop right here, which is going to automatically trip this 5 amp breaker, restoring control of the contactor to the 057 mini BMS. So essentially, this whole automated system right here is going to automatically happen once you just take this guy right here and just um, plug it in, and then all automation. And then one, and then one uh, control flip. And then once this guy is back full again, you just unplug the laptop charger and flip that switch back over to the default mode, which is to discharge power from the Tesla battery into this. And that's how you automate the system so that when things don't work, you're not frustrated. It's not confusing, and this works for all the different scenarios. If you were to overcharge the Tesla battery, this system actually allows you to bypass the BMS and actually slowly discharge the battery, because I, um, you will get that if it's sitting idle long enough. Uh, you, I've had that situation before. And also, if the cells are unbalanced, it allows you to bypass it and actually send some current into there or send some discharge current so that you can actually manually have some control over that with a fail safe because there's really no way that you can break this system with the way that it's set up right now. You just plug something in and give it time and everything is going to auto fix itself as well as the supplemental BMS which was explained in another video automatically has all the other triggers that are going to be automated as well. So this is a really really nice solution and I do apologize for the delay. I missed my deadline on getting this to you but when testing out the 057 Mini BMS through its paces, I realized that an automated solution was really what we were looking for. And I figured just that standard laptop charger input port is going to be the best solution for you because that's really, really dead simple and you don't need to try to diagnose anything.